I came here with uh, very minimum knowledge uh, about Bangladesh. Uh, I had never served in this part of the world. Uh, this was my first time in South Asia. Uh, of course, I read uh, books and articles. I gather information, but my experience for the last three years have enriched uh, all that knowledge that I acquired through books. Uh, living with people is a totally different experience. Uh, I have to say that I, I have been uh, positively and very pleasantly surprised by seeing all the similarities and shared values that our two countries uh, enjoy throughout history. Um, for example, the aspect of Sufism uh, was one of the things I discovered first uh, that is a bond between our countries. Uh, Mevlana Jalal Ettin Rumi, uh, Hazret Shah Jalal, whose mother, by the way, is, is from Konya, uh, where Rumi lived and died. So uh, that was a very powerful connection for me that I discovered between our countries. Uh, I have uh, really uh, had very good time with uh, the people of Bangladesh, not only in Dhaka, but also traveling outside of Dhaka, met with very generous, hospitable people of this country. Uh, I was a guest in their houses. Uh, I attended many uh, different meetings and I was very uh, humbled by the uh, generosity and hospitality in Bangladesh. Uh, professionally speaking, uh, I was also uh, very impressed by the resilience of the people of Bangladesh. Uh, you know, struggling through centuries uh, with natural disasters and uh, how they cope with it uh, was a, a remarkable uh, learning for me. And uh, one of the factors uh, which makes it possible that Bangladesh is so uh, resilient is the fact that uh, civil society is very powerful in Bangladesh. One of the strongest uh, NGOs are in Bangladesh, such as uh, BRAC or Friendship or, or similar NGOs who are providing all kinds of services uh, to the even the people in the re remote areas. Uh, I was in Shunderband. I saw some of the people who are living in the villages and how they uh, support each other in solidarity. Uh, some of the health services are taken to uh, the distant charts uh, and also their talents in terms of uh, you know, artisanal uh, artifacts are displayed uh, in many parts of the country but also uh, abroad. So all this is possible because of the NGO's work, hard work, and I really appreciated uh, that Bangladesh is such a rich country in culture uh, and it's uh, very much uh, contributing uh, to, to uh, the uh, global uh, richness of our culture. The government of Bangladesh has realized the significance of entrepreneurship and uh, also the people who are innovating to address some of the complex challenges, the role of technology in our society. So in, back in 2008, as you know, uh, Digital Bangladesh has been introduced as a program by the government. And that actually, I hope, uh, that will continue for the years to come because uh, technology's role is uh, improving in our society, becoming more and more important. And uh, what I witnessed is that this program, with the support of the government uh, and private sector, has created uh, some very innovative startups uh, in Bangladesh. I had the pleasure of meeting a lot of them throughout my three years here. Uh, we have brought an accelerated program to Bangladesh, which was dealing with financial inclusion related challenges. And uh, I was very happy that two Bangladeshi startups have graduated from this international program, uh, Balo and Shadin. They are working with farmers uh, very successfully. We have supported them both through know-how and financial resources. And uh, I'm proud to leave some legacy behind in the startup world in Bangladesh. We had very good relations with ICT ministry. 
Uh, one of the first visits I made in the country was to Lalmanir Hat in February 2020 with the ICT State Minister uh, Pollock, my good friend. Uh, we opened a technical institute for ICT training and women empowerment in one of the uh, villages in uh, Lalmanir Hat. So I was very happy to start a collaboration with uh, ICT Ministry early on, and that collaboration has continued. We organized webinars during COVID to connect our uh, startup ecosystems. And uh, more recently, <clears throat> we are also uh, trying to increase our collaboration uh, in the ICT sector uh, through B2B meetings. And I'm, I'm feeling that this will be a potentially a, a very good area of collaboration between our countries. That we already have two big investments in Bangladesh. One is in the household uh, appliances and electronics uh, field. Uh, there is a very innovative Turkish company who invested uh, through uh, acquisition of the majority shares of Singer Bangladesh, and they are now expanding their business. So this is a promising area where there will be more interest. Uh, second area was energy LPG uh, field. Uh, one of our uh, big companies invested in Chittagong, $150 million. Uh, they are filling and uh, distributing LPG cylinders to the households in Bangladesh. And they are going to introduce also autogas. You know, in Turkey, we are very good at uh, converting our cars in, uh, into uh, auto, uh, working with gas rather than fuel. And it's very uh, economical also. And uh, there are other sectors, as you mentioned, where uh, our companies are interested. Uh, for example, uh, co contracting sector, you know, the infrastructure projects, mega projects. Uh, we have in the world of uh, contracting companies, there's a list of 250 uh, best companies in the world and 45 of them are Turkish. So uh, these companies are building roads, bridges, hospitals, uh, all, of, all kinds of infrastructure, railways, uh, airports. Uh, so we would like to bring some of these companies in Bangladesh and invest in the future of Bangladesh through building infrastructure uh, projects. So we're working with the government to create the conditions for them to come, uh, but it is not only limited to this area in which Turkish companies are interested. Uh, we have created a business forum uh, between 11 powerful Bangladeshi companies and six Turkish companies who are operating in Bangladesh. And they will soon explore in which areas we can create win-win, mutually beneficial projects uh, to be implemented. Bangladesh Turkey Business Forum. It's led by uh, Dr. Rubana Hak, the former uh, BGMEA president and current uh, vice chancellor of the Asian University of, uh, of Women. Uh, she's a very dynamic uh, woman business leader. And uh, we also have other companies in the forum, such as AK Khan, uh, Kazi Farms, uh, we have Square Group, Ispahani Group, ESRM, United Group, uh, and many others. So I think this group will be a powerful forum uh, to promote uh, business uh, relations between our countries and explore uh, investment opportunities in Bangladesh. We have already done it, actually. Uh, it was done, the one in Turkey was done to uh, BIDA and FPCCI, not uh, Security Exchange Commission. Uh, so they, have, they were there uh, a few months ago. Uh, they have brought uh, all the uh, you know, people in charge who are promoting uh, Bangladesh abroad, uh, such as the High Tech Park Authority, or uh, you know the authority in charge of the uh, 
uh, special economic zones, uh, BEZA and, and others uh, who were there to uh, explain the opportunities of uh, doing business uh, in Bangladesh. They were hosted by uh, our, uh, in Turkey we have Foreign Economic Relations Board uh, which has uh, Bangladesh Turkey uh, Business Council. So they partnered with them and uh, they visited Turkey uh, for two days uh, to have conversations with both the private sector and the government. More recently, last month, uh, Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry, DCCI, uh, has been in Turkey with uh, more than 85 uh, business people from Bangladesh and they met with more than 200 uh, Turkish businesses in Istanbul. Uh, they also met with our Minister of Trade. So these contacts are ongoing and uh, there is a good un understanding now about the potentials both in Bangladesh but also in uh, my country. So I I'm sure that in the near future these contacts will yield uh, tangible results. Yes, that's an area that we need to uh, work on uh, a bit more uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, we are going through difficult times. Uh, each country is facing uh, economic challenges uh, in their own country and trying to attract investment. Uh, so I think uh, once the war in Ukraine is over and, and we have a, a bit more stability in international markets, uh, there will be interest for sure because, as I said, through the contacts I have uh, just mentioned, uh, Bangladeshi and Turkish businesses understand much better uh, the potentials that, that exist in Bangladesh and in uh, Turkey. So uh, this area of portfolio investment will be one of the uh, near future uh, areas where we can work on because Bangladesh is a growing economy. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's a stable country for investment and the fact that <clears throat> our uh, two large Turkish companies have already invested uh, is a good indicator for encouraging further investment uh, from my country, both in the real economy uh, through joint ventures, uh, but also in the, in the stock market. Uh, why not? If there are uh, promising pro profits to be made, uh, investment investors would be interested. Thank you for this question because it's an important one. Uh, because yes, Bangladesh offers many opportunities and uh, government officials are promoting those opportunities, rightly so. But there are also challenges, as you said. Uh, the challenges are mainly related to bureaucracy and uh, how how. Uh, promoting business, doing business in Bangladesh uh, should be much easier. Uh, for example, the LPG company that I mentioned, uh, to be able to operational, uh, to start their operations, they had to take uh, more than 35 different licenses from different institutions in Bangladesh. Uh, this, these procedures can be made a bit easier the customs procedures, uh, whenever they want to invest in, uh, bring uh, some of the um, equipment, uh, some of the machinery, some of the materials they need to uh, for their business, uh, customs duties and procedures must be uh, made more favorable to foreign investors. And also whenever uh, they have a problem, uh, the government is very willing to address them. but. I think uh, it should not depend on the government's efforts only. There is a need for an objective uh, judiciary system, uh, a court system that can process some of the uh, disputes uh, that may arise uh, between uh, the business people, but also between the, the, the foreign investors and uh, the government officials or the government institutions. So these are some of the things that can be uh, improved. Uh, currently, uh, there is an issue related to uh, foreign exchange uh, reserves uh, in Bangladesh, like in many other countries. And uh, maybe when 
Uh, Bangladesh is more confident about its foreign uh, exchange reserves uh, when it diversifies its economy and has uh, more uh, sources of uh, foreign exchange uh, other than remittances and RMG exports. Uh, perhaps uh, it would be a good idea to relax the foreign exchange market uh, for the, 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 the investors to repatriate their profits for Bangladeshi businesses to invest in other countries uh, and, and create uh, partnerships with uh, you know, foreign companies. Uh, this kind of liberalization of the economy would be extremely useful uh, to also integrate uh, Bangladeshi economy into the world economy. Bangladesh is no more uh, an LDC, so it's the right time to work on these issues to make it make the uh, the country more competitive in international markets. Uh, this will certainly uh, bring <clears throat> further uh, partnerships, joint ventures uh, into Bangladesh as well. Oh, there are so many areas, really. Uh, one of the functions of our business forum will be to explore also the cultural domain where our countries uh, share values, share history, share cultural traditions, uh, music, uh, literature, um, many areas. Uh, for example, I have started this during my term that uh, we explored uh, our common shared Sufi traditions. I have organized a Sufi event at the embassy last year in December. Uh, <clears throat> we have brought Sufi musicians and uh, whirling dervishes. I took them to Silek, to Chittagong and to Shilpakala Academy as well. They collaborated with uh, local artists, uh, singers and uh, Lalon, uh, Baal music, Katak dance. These are all uh, inspired by Sufism. So I think that's a really important area of exploration. Uh, we will discover many more things. Uh, another area is, uh, of course, history. Uh, there is a lot to discover in our, uh, in our histories, both of our countries' history. Uh, we should also look back into the, the Sultanate area, where uh, you know, our interaction between the Turkish people and uh, Bang Bengali people in this region have started. Uh, even back in those times, uh, I have recently visited Bagerhat and the uh, Sixty Dome Mosque, uh, where it was written that the mosque was built by a Turkish Sultan. It represents one of the best examples of uh, Turkish architecture in Bangladesh. And it's one of the three UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, so I was very uh, proud to see that such interactions took place in the past. And I'm sure there are many more uh, examples of this. Uh, we can look into a Mughal uh, Empire and its contributions uh, to not only to this region, but also to, to the world uh, civilization. Uh, Akbar the Great uh, was a very interesting sultan uh, in this part of the world, which tried to bring all religions together. And the Ilahi is very famous uh, approach uh, to uh, inter-religious dialogue uh, is something that we can all be inspired from. Coming uh, to more recent times, uh, we have Kazi Nazrul Islam, uh, who is a bridge between our countries. He, admired Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and expressed his admiration through his epic poem Kemal Pasha, which we showcased uh, through recitation at our National Day recently at the embassy. He also wrote and adopted some of the Turkish folk songs into uh, uh, Bangla language. Uh, one of them is Shukno Pater Nupur Paye, and uh, we call that song Katibin uh, in Turkish. It's a very famous song, and uh, we had a uh, we had a performance uh, related to that song. So there is a lot to discover uh, in the cultural domain. For that, uh, we need the contributions of both uh, the universities, maybe think tanks. Uh, we can receive support from private sector and governments to explore all these areas. 
I have planted some seeds in this domain, the cultural domain, and I'm sure my successor uh, will try to cultivate uh, those seeds uh, to really uh, bring our countries together uh, through mutual understanding of our shared history and culture. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to share with you uh, my, my thoughts and feelings.